Welcome to section 10.3 of the cross product. We're going to look at the formula for the cross product and some applications of the actual formula itself. Let's get started. To begin with, the cross product yields a vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to two different vectors. And the notation for the cross product of u and v is uxv. So this is not multiplication. This is the notation for cross product. And again, it's applying to two vectors. If we are actually finding the cross product, then the cross product of u dot v is equal to u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2 times i, and then minus u1 times v3 minus u3 times v1 times j, and then finally u1 times v2 minus u2 times v1 times k. So this inside portion is going to yield an actual scalar value, and then we're going to be multiplying it by the unit vector, either unit vector i, j, or k to come up with, again, a vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to the original two vectors we used to find the cross product. Let's go ahead and look at an example. All right, we have two familiar vectors here, vector u and vector v. We're going to use to find the cross product. Vector u is 3, 4, 2, and then vector v is 3, 6, 4. One thing I kind of want to highlight about our formula here is if I'm trying to find the first component from my cross product, notice I'm using u2 and v3 and then u3 and v2. So I'm using the vector, or so the components, except for the first one because I'm finding the first one. If I'm looking for the second component, notice I'm using the first and the third. And lastly, if I'm looking for my third component, I'm using the first and the second. Another kind of unique pattern here is the smaller portion comes first, so it's u2 v3, and then we switch it u3 v2. And we notice that again for our second component, we have u1 and then v3. And the same pattern happens for our third component where it's u1 and then v2. So if you think about it in that order, it's kind of easy to remember this formula. When we go ahead and plug in our actual components, we can see that done here. So again, we have u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2, and then we have i, and then u1 times v3 minus u3 times v1 times j, and then lastly, u1 times v2 minus u2 times v1. And after we do a little bit of simplifying, we can see for our final cross product, we have the vector 4i minus 6j plus 6k. Now, I did state that this is, in fact, orthogonal to our two original vectors. So if I were to take the dot product of my resulting cross product with either of the two original vectors, I should get zero. And that's a nice way to check to make sure that I've done things correctly. All right, we're going to go ahead and find the cross product of u and v here and show that it is orthogonal to both u and v. To begin with, let's find the cross product. So I'm going to take u2 and multiply it by v3. So we have 1 times negative 1. And then we're going to be subtracting u3 times v2. And this all gets multiplied by i. Then we're going to take u1 and multiply it by v2, sorry, v3. Yeah. Right, for example here, we're going to go ahead and find the cross product of u and v and then show that it's orthogonal to u and v by taking the dot product and getting 0. So to begin with, plugging information in to find our cross product, we're going to have three, sorry, negative 3 times 1 minus 1 times negative 2 i minus 2 times 1 minus 1 times 1 j. And then for our last one, plus 2 times negative 2 minus negative 3 times 1 K. That simplifies to be the vector negative 1i minus 1j minus 1k. So this is our cross product of u and v. What we're going to do now is take that and do the dot product of our cross product with each original vector and show that we get 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my original uh, u value. So we're going to do u with our cross product, which is going to give me 2 times negative 1 minus 3 times negative 1, and minus 1 times 1, which equals negative 2 plus 3 minus 1, or 0. So our cross product, dot product with the u vector was 0. We're going to go ahead and do it with our other vector, just to verify it works for that as well. So we're going to take v with our cross product, and that gets us 1 times negative 1, minus 2 times negative 1, plus 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1 plus 2 minus 1, which is also 0.
So we found a cross product and we verified by doing the dot product with the original vectors that it was in fact orthogonal since we got zero both times. One of the main applications of the cross product is that the magnitude of the cross product of two different vectors is going to yield the area of the parallelogram that has u and v as adjacent sides. Let's go ahead and look at an example of this. So here we have two vectors that are in standard form or they're in a combination. We have u, which is 3i plus 4j plus 6k, and then we have v, which is 2i minus j plus 5k. We're going to go ahead and plug it into our formula to find the cross product, and then we're going to take that value and try to take that vector and use it to help us find the area of our parallelogram. So if we plug in our values in, again, for u2, v3, u3, and v2, and so on to find our vector, we get the following information. So again, we have u2 times v3, and then minus u3 times v2 times i, minus u1 times v3, minus u3 times v1 times j, and then we have u1 times v2 minus u2 times v1 times k. Doing some simplifying and getting to our final answer, we have the vector 26i minus 3j minus 11k. So now we're gonna take this vector and find the magnitude of it to help turn it into the area of our parallelogram. All right, so if I go ahead and take the magnitude of my vector, I'm gonna plug in the components, and I'm gonna take the square root of each component squared. So we have the square root of 26 squared plus negative three squared plus negative 11 squared. Doing a little bit of simplifying, we end up getting the square root of 806, which is approximately 28.39 square units since we're finding the area. Another major application of the cross product is something called a triple scalar. And the triple scalar product involves three different vectors, u, v, and w. And what we have here is the dot product of a vector and the cross product. So we have u dot cross product of v and w. And the triple scalar product is always going to give us the volume of something called a parallelopiped that is formed using these three vectors. For our example of finding the triple scalar, we have vectors u, which is 3i minus 5j plus k, vector v, which is 2j minus 2k, and vector w, which is 3i plus j plus k. Our formula again is u dot v cross w. So we're going to find the cross product of v and w first, and then take that with the dot product of u. So for our cross product, Notice that for our vector v, there is no i component, which means it's going to be a 0. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this as 0, 2, and negative 2. And then for my uh, w vector, we have 3, 1, and 1. All right, so when I go to find my cross product, we have 2 times 1 minus a negative 2 times 1 i. And then we have minus 0 times 1 minus a negative 2 times 3, j. And then for our last component, we have plus 0 times 2 minus 2 times 3. And this is our k value. When I simplify this whole vector, we end up getting 4i minus 6j minus 6k. And I'm going to take that vector and do the dot product with my vector u, which was 3i minus 5j plus k. So when I do that, we get 4 times 3 minus 6 times negative 5 minus 6 times 1, which is 12 plus 30 minus 6. And my final answer is then 36 which means the volume of the parallel pipe ed created by our three vectors is 36 units cubed. All right, that does it for our lesson. Go ahead and get started with the homework, and good luck.